welcome to episode three of Gino's Guys. As always, I'm your host, Connor, joined by Madden Andrew. And we promised after our last episode, our next one would be guard preview for the 2024-25 season. So here it is. Basically, it's going to go over the very deep backcourt that the Huskies have this year under Gino Oriema. Well, let's get right into it. I feel like there's a clear number one player that we need to talk about, and that's Paige Beckers back for another year. Her swan song the last year, she'll be in stores. How, how excited are you guys to have her back? Obviously, she hasn't won that title yet that we all thought she'd win at least a couple of during her time when she committed here way back when. But I'm just really excited that she gets one last shot at it. I'm super excited, too, because it's always you know awesome to have someone with this much coverage on your team. And like you said, she hasn't earned that national championship yet. I think that was kind of the, the plan this year. She could have gone to the WNBA, could have gone pro, but she decided to come back for that fifth year, super senior. Yeah, that announcement on senior night was awesome because they had four seniors to celebrate that night. Two of them went to the draft, uh, Aliyah Edwards and Nika Mule. And then two of them announced that they were coming back, and that would be Paige and Aubrey Griffin. So it's really great to see Paige coming back. Now, obviously, I feel like she came back for this season because she knows that no matter what, she's going to end up get going pro, and she's got a crap load of NIL deals. I mean, you could probably write pages about the NID <laughs> – pages. Anyway, the uh, the NIL deal she has. But I feel like that ring means a lot to her because she didn't just commit to UConn to be – um to just get money. She really wants to win that ring, and I think that means more to her than anything. So I'm really excited to – to see that last shot. But what I also wanted to say is I don't think she was completely content with her UConn career. No, she was fantastic her freshman year. And then the injuries kind of caught up to her, unfortunately. Last year she was healthy, but, you know, the Achilles injury um, where that sat her out for a whole season and then a couple of injuries during her sophomore year that, that had her out for some time. So I feel like that's also why she decided to come back. Yeah, she, like you said, missed that full season. She's only played in three years, so it's not it's not crazy that she's back for another year. She only had three years under her belt. But I just feel like having the taste every year of at least the Final Four, and one year they made the national championship against South Carolina in 2022, but making the Final Four as a freshman and losing, making it to the title game as a sophomore and losing, not playing at all during your junior season, then your senior season, you make it to the final four and lose to the best player in the sport and Caitlin Clark. I feel like Paige feels like her time is now, especially with Clark gone. She can be the face of this sport. There's obviously Paige, there's Juju Watkins on USC, who we'll see in December come up to Hartford. But yeah, I just feel like Paige has a chance to take some of that spotlight that Caitlin Clark had last year. And I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if she does. Yeah. I mean, Obvious, by the way, ACL, not Achilles, that's on me. Um, but I 100% agree with what Connor said. You know, she's she's gone up against a lot of tough teams in her lifetime. Obviously, those South Carolina teams were just unfair, basically, back when they had Aaliyah Boston, just the most unstoppable player in the game at that time. But I feel like she does think that her time is now. You know, obviously, Clark was the story of last year, and she didn't even win it. Um South Carolina ended up winning it again with Cardoso and then LSU with Reese to the draft, Cardoso to the draft. So I do feel like that her time is now and that she's finally going to bring that, that title back to stores. And I don't think this is the case, but it's certainly something to talk about last year's, like you just mentioned all those names. It was a loaded college season with Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Cardoso, all top talents in the WNBA draft page. She probably would have been picked pretty high if she went, but I feel like coming back for another year, she's almost guaranteed to be that number one overall pick that I'm sure, even if she won't admit it to out loud, which she probably shouldn't. I, if I was in her position, I'd want to be the number one overall pick in the draft. So with no Caitlin Clark in this year's class, she'll certainly have a chance to do that. You guys got anything else on Paige Beckers before we move on to the next guard? I feel like there's not much to say. It's obviously very, very talented. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... We all know Paige. We know she's going to ball out. But moving on to probably the next most prominent player in the backcourt for the Huskies, one that won't be healthy to start the season, AZ Fudd. But another, I mean, this is going to be a common theme with pretty much everyone we talk about. Very injury-riddled career in store so far. What's your guys' initial thoughts about her going into this year? Obviously a big year for her as well because she this is her last year playing with Paige. We kind of associated the duo over the past three, four years. What's your initial thoughts going into that? 
Well, it's just unfortunate what's happened to the both of them because they're only a year apart. They were supposed to have three years with each other, and they haven't even played half the games um, that they were supposed to play with each other. So it's it really stinks, but I feel like people have kind of forgotten what she can do, what her ability is. And I a game I want to go back to is a Texas game at Gamble where she basically single-handedly beat one of the best teams in college basketball at that time. Um, she, I mean, I remember she dropped – somebody and uh hit a shot or i mean the three point shots were automatic so i think that saving her is smart because you don't want to have her get another injury because honestly at this point this might be thinking a little too far down the line but what matters most for this team is march because the big east has some competition but i still feel like they should win that you know obviously you probably do want her for those tough games that we mentioned in the first episode like the usc the tennessee the notre dame you know those games you probably do want her but if you can have her healthy in March along with everybody else, I, like I've said before, this seems unstoppable. And, like, not not only do you want her healthy for March, you kind of need her healthy. I feel like in order to kind of get over that hump, win the national championship, I feel like you need that dynamic duo there kind of making each other better. I feel like AZ is just such a big part of this team that I, I just don't think you're going to win without her. Obviously, you have a lot of great players coming in very – highly ranked prospects, but I, I feel like this team isn't that national championship contender that it is without fun. Yeah, and obviously she's not going to be there right away, but once she gets back, I feel like it'll be pretty quick before she enters the starting lineup. I, it, it may not be the first game, but she's just that talented. She's a senior. We'll talk about the starting lineup over the course of these next few previews, but obviously Paige is going to be in there. AZ will be in there once she gets healthy. Moving on from AZ Fudd to KK Arnold, who as a freshman had a lot on her plate playing pretty much every minute out there. She was one of the few that stayed healthy last season, a major, major factor for Gino and the Huskies. Her and Ashlyn Shade were the two freshmen that played a majority of the minutes. I feel like KK's poised for another breakout season. And like Paige and like AZ, maybe not on the same scale, but the fans love her. She has a great following especially for, for someone who maybe isn't as high profile as the other two. It's just that's what the UConn basketball brand does. And KK, I feel like, is poised to have a great sophomore season. Yeah, KK had a great end to the uh, end of the year in the tournament, uh, put up good numbers there throughout the run. And I feel like, like you said, she's going to take that second year leap. She's going to get above double digits. She's obviously going to start the year with FUD out. And, and I feel like she'll be able to kind of get into a more comfortable role once Fudd comes back, she'll probably be coming off the bench, but that'll be fine because then you have a starter caliber player off the bench. It's just a really great problem to have when you have so much talent in that backcourt. And she's a player who really made the most of what she got last year, which was a lot of time, unfortunately, because of injuries. You know, she kind of got almost thrown into the deep end there the, uh, last year, and she really played very well. I mean, she's really scrappy on defense and really great on offense. So I feel like she's going to be a starter more likely than not. And not to mention, she's also very popular within the fan base. You know, you see her TikTok dance as she does with Paige and all the, the other players. So it's that's more than people would like to admit. That's important. You know, you want to get the fans engaged. But I think she's going to be a, a huge part of this team yet again. And like you said, she's very scrappy. It's a lot of the stuff that she does that doesn't show up on the box score. Uh, like I mentioned, that run in March, that game against Iowa, she played really well. She had 14 points along with five steals. So if she can, you know, put up these defensive numbers every night like she almost did in this tournament. She had five steals twice. Then it's going to be very hard to, you know, get by this team, score a lot of points. Yeah, I'm going to use an analogy with the men's team because that's, to be fair, that's what we specialize in. Reminds me a lot of Hassan Diar or the men's team, just a guy, a person who comes in, a lot of energy. Obviously, KK starts. Hassan came off the bench, but just getting all those steals is being disruptive on defense. And to Andrew's point about, obviously she, there were injuries that forced her to play a lot for every minute that one player misses another player gains. So sure. It sucks that we had all those players like easy fun miss all of last year, but you have a freshman who came in and played 39 games, played 30 minutes a game. Not a lot of other programs can say that they have their sophomores coming in that played that much produced at such a high level. Another player that matches that same exact description, Ashlyn Shade, a player who I think, at least at the beginning of this season with AC Fudd on the shelf, will be in the starting lineup just because she did it all of last year. She is, I feel like, poised like KK for a breakout season. I mean, she, they play different styles of games. I feel like 
Shade is a bit more of a shooter than KK is. She averaged 11 points per game in her freshman season, shot 35% from three. I could see that going up a little bit, with, especially with Paige setting her up with more good looks. But, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. I feel like Ashlyn Shade, is she might be my X factor for this team, especially seeing how experienced she was last year. She's a very productive player. The, the issue I see with Shade is how sort of streaky she is. Obviously, going into the second year here, you're going to kind of level out and become – a solid overall player, but in the tournament, she started off with 26 and 19. Then she put up zero against Duke and five and five in the last two games. So you, you need a more consistent Ashlyn shade in my opinion. Um, but I mean, she'll, she'll definitely kind of, like I said, level out into this high quality player. Yeah. She'll definitely be in the starting lineup to start because she like Connor. So was another one that got kind of thrown in there last year, but I feel like once AZ comes back, she'll be off the bench and, you know, if you've got a player as good as her coming off the bench, then you're doing something right. Um, but I, I agree. I think she could be the X factor, especially if she does end up coming off the bench. Obviously, we hope that AZ is able to come back. Obviously, she won't be back for, for opening night, but hopefully she can come back pretty quick. But either way, we got a really good uh, back up there in shade because she last year showed a lot of toughness as well. I feel like she was more destined to be kind of just a three point shooter, but I feel like she did show a lot of uh a lot of strength on the defensive end as well. So I really I can't wait to see what her sophomore years has in store. Yeah, if you guys remember, she was very huge in those first two tournament games in stores. I just pulled up the her game log. She scored 26 in that round of 64 game against Jackson State and then followed that up with 19 against Syracuse in the round of 32. So she performed on the big stage. It's not like she was a freshman who played all year because she had to. And then she kind of shriveled out and didn't perform. She performed in the tournament. And I I just think I had similar vibes like her with Caroline Ducharme her freshman year. Going into the season last year, I feel like they are a little bit different players. They're similar catch-and-shoot type of performers. But, yeah, I just feel like Ashlyn Shade, She may, like you said, Andrew, she may not start the entire season once we get healthy. But if you if you were to tell me that – this say I had no idea who the team was. You were to tell me you had a player that started 33 games as a freshman and then comes off the bench as a sophomore, I'd say you're doing something right in that program because there's depth, there's talent, it's all over the place. Moving on, next name, one of the newcomers, the only transfer on this year's roster, Caitlin Chen, coming in from Princeton. This is kind of a wild card, I feel like, for the Huskies because you don't see Gino taking too, too many transfers compared to some other programs around the country. Obviously, you get your fair share. There's plenty of great people that transferred into UConn over the years, but Chen comes in from Princeton after playing three years. One of the best scorers in the country. She averaged 15, 60 points per game with Princeton the past couple of years. I mean, I'm comparing it to the men again. We mentioned for the men, Jaden Ross is the wild card there because you don't really know what you can get from him. You don't really know what you have Caitlin Chen at the Big East level. Could she average double figures? Sure, maybe. Could she start? Sure, maybe. I feel like a lot of question marks, but definitely high potential. And a lot of people are very high on Caitlin Chen, especially with all the injuries to start the year. I've seen in our comments and all over social media, Caitlin Chen, um, there's a lot of hype around her and a lot of people think that she could be the X factor, uh, for this team. And I have to agree. I mean, coming in as one of the top scorers in the country coming in under Gino Ariema, I, I feel like that's only positive and I feel like it's only up from here. Yeah, I would have to say that, that she's the wild card by no means. Does that mean that she's just not going to play wild card strictly means that you really just don't know what you're going to get because technically she's the only you know, quote unquote newcomer because these freshmen we knew were coming. Um, but obviously she was very good at Princeton, but that's a completely different league than the competition we're going to be playing here. Um, I feel like it's kind of like a Mahaney situation. If you were co to compare it to the men's team, you know, West coast conference, completely different than the Big East. same thing with Ivy league to the Big East. But I do think that I've watched some tape on her. She can really shoot the ball. Well, and I think she's going to fit in perfectly to this rotation where that is as of right now, on October 20th, I'm not too sure, but I feel like she. either way, she will end up being a big part of this team when it comes down to when it matters. Yeah, we're talking about some starting lineup stuff here. She could easily be in the starting lineup off rip and start the entire year. We don't, You don't know who's going to be in the starting lineup until you really get to the season. But to your point, I mean, she had a much larger role at Princeton than she will here. I 
I'm not gonna lie. I didn't watch any Princeton women's basketball. I know I knew they were solid. I remember seeing them at least ranked near the top 25 at some points last year, but I didn't watch any of it. But she averaged 15, 16 points per game the past two years. I assume as the lead scorer, the lead ball handler, pretty much the lead everything. That's not going to be her role at UConn. You got Paige Beckers as doing all that. AC Fudd when she's healthy. KK Arnold. So she's going to take a step back. And I feel like that could be beneficial because it's less pressure. It also is more pressure at the same time. It's not a bigger stage. So maybe that evens out. But I don't know. This should be very interesting to watch. I'm excited. And I was talking before about KK Arnold and that defensive prowess. I feel like we've kind of we're kind of developing a little bit of an identity here. This backcourt that we're only taking people who are going to put in just as much effort on the defensive end as they do on the offensive end. This it, Once uh, once FUD comes back, this will be four players on the team who's averaged more than a steal a game uh, over the past few seasons. And I feel like that sort of identity that you're building, along with the fantastic scoring that you kind of have with Paige and you know FUD once she returns and Ducharme, I, I feel like this team is, is built for success, and, and I feel like they're ready for that deep run. Yeah, once they're healthy, I mean, there's so many options you can go to because all these players, for the most part, are like top 15, top 20 recruits, even the freshmen. We got Morgan Shelley, who we'll talk about next episode. She's the 11th recruit. Ali Zeibel, who we'll talk about in a few moments here. She's the number seven recruit, and obviously Sarah Strong, the number one recruit. Those are your freshmen. You have basically three top 10 freshmen coming in with these players that are experienced. Like, even if they've been injured, they still are experienced in the program, but yeah, depth is going to be something I feel like, fingers crossed, that we have, will have this year that we haven't had in the past few years. Yeah, fingers crossed. But two more players we'll touch upon here for this guard preview. One a little less, one a little more, I feel like. We'll start with Caden Samuels. She was a freshman last year. Let's see, I'll pull up. I should have had her stats ready. I'm going to pull it up live here because I didn't prepare it. Last year, she only averaged five points per game, but she played in 36 games off the bench as one of the healthy bodies. I feel like it's similar to Ashlyn Shade and KK Arnold having that experience. Obviously, not to the same degree. She she played in 36 games, but she only played 12 minutes per game off the bench and make a single start. But I don't know what her role is going to be in this year's team, but it's deeper because I don't know what her role was supposed to be last year as a freshman, but before you lost two or three players season-ending injuries. But yeah. Probably another similar wild card, but not to the extent of Chen. And I feel like she was definitely a beneficiary of all the injuries. Uh, obviously, you know, a talented player playing at UConn, but I feel like she's not up to the expectations of Gino in a way. I feel like once players come back, she will get a little bit lost in this rotation. And I feel like just as the season goes on, we're going to kind of find what role she fits into. I do agree. You know, the... This rotation, once everybody becomes healthy, like in March, it is going to be hard for Gino to play everybody, which unfortunately won't happen. And it's not going to be only her that falls um, kind of into not playing. It'll be definitely other people. But, I mean, this beginning of the season is going to be huge for her because of the injuries, you know, prove that she's got, um, prove that she can play at this level. So, But I think that she's going to really contribute in the beginning of the season and I do agree with Connor. She's going to be another wild card because you saw what she did last year. Again, another scrappy defensive player can shoot the three ball, but you just, you know, it's going to be, it's going to come down to who is going to contribute more in a single game, her or somebody else. So I feel like definitely a wild card, but she will play a lot to start the season for sure. Yeah. Having 12, 13 players ideally is something that Gino hasn't had to deal with. Uh, Matt, we were just talking before this, looking at the Iowa final four box score Six players played in that game. The starting lineup, Paige Beggars, Nika Mule, Shade, Arnold Edwards, and Ice Brady played 15 minutes off the bench. I feel like that's not going to be the case this year, especially if everyone's healthy, but it's also kind of what Gino's used to. He's used to the roster pretty much by the month losing a player. That's harsh to say, but it's the truth. He's used to playing six, seven girls throughout all of March. But if everyone's healthy, I feel like the rotation will be like eight or nine, which if it's eight or nine, that means there's, two or three very talented players that aren't seeing the floor for UConn in March, which is something that is certainly not every program can say that they have that being the case. But moving on, the last player, the last guard we'll be previewing, the only freshman guard that we'll be talking about is Ali Zeibel. And we don't know too much about her, honestly. I didn't follow her at all in high school. But what I did see that first night last weekend, her three-point shooting is awesome. 
I mean, they did the three point contest like they do every year. She went first amongst all of the all the players, and she made all four on her first rack and all four on her second rack. She missed a couple down the stretch, but still amazing shooter. Probably someone who's gonna play off the bench right away. It could be in like a spark plug rule, kind of spark off the bench. If you need a quick three ball, she's probably not gonna play too too much as a freshman, but I feel like if we made this podcast last year, we'd be saying the same thing about Ashlyn Shade and KK Arnold for the upcoming season. They're not going to play too much. Then look what happened. So you never know, but I feel like Ali Zeibel is someone that will make an instant impact offensively for the Huskies. And I feel like a lot of it with Gino is playing yourself onto the court, you know, earning your minutes. And I feel like she's someone who could very easily earn minutes, especially with shooting off the bench. I, I just feel like, if you bring her in for five to 10 minutes a night and she could hit two, three pointers, I feel like you've gotten enough production out of her that you need. And I mean, anything else that you get, it would just be awesome to have. I feel like obviously Paige is your lead scorer. And if you surround her with shooters and allow her to distribute, it, it's going to be very hard to to guard this team. So that's definitely a major pickup. Yeah. I mean, Gino's no stranger to this game. He's the best college wa- basketball coach um, of all time, at least in the women's. And UConn is the best college basketball team of all time, in my opinion. But, yeah, you just you don't walk into UConn and start playing just because of your name. You know, obviously you got to play your way onto the court. But Gino's a guy where he's going to say, you know, if we need some threes or we need some quick buckets, she's going to go out there. If she makes them, she stays in. She misses, she comes out. You know, she's not just going to play because she was very good in high school. But I saw those clips from first night. Her three-point shot looks automatic. Now, obviously, those were those were wide open. But, you know, if she can get into a catch and shoot like a Z Futter or a Caroline Ducharme, this team is going to be scary, to say the least, come March. Yeah, you can never have enough shooting on your rosters. I mean, she won the McDonald's All-American game three-point shooting contest. I'm not going to act like I knew that before I just read it on her bio page. But I believe it. She was dominating in that three-point contest. She also... She scored 2,800 points in high school, which that's a lot of points for four years of high school. So she very talented score. Her role as a freshman may not be huge, but like I'd said, it, we didn't expect it probably to be huge for Ashlyn Shade either. And she started 33 games for a team that made the final four. But you guys got anything else here about the guards? Obviously a very, very talented group, a whole very talented roster as a whole. But before we go, I got one, one last little fun thing. We'll see this little game. Well, WNBA Finals Game 5 is going on right now. It's currently halftime. Lynx are up 34 to 27. I want predictions from you guys who wins this game. This will probably go out Tuesday, so we'll know who won. We'll just see who looks like a fool. Liberty are coming back. Stewie's going to go off and lead the Liberty. Obviously, I love Fee and, and Dorka too, but I think Stewie's going to come go off and, and win this game for the Liberty. I actually think the Lynx hold on. Uh, Nafisa has 14 points right now at halftime, and that's a pretty bad sign um, if you're in New York. I, I feel like she'll stay hot, and I feel like it's going to be hard to kind of overcome that. Obviously, the Liberty, so filled with talent. They're not they're not playing too hot right now. Sabrina has zero points at halftime, so it's it's going to take a pretty big turnaround from Sabrina. Um, Stewie's always Stewie, has 10 boards at halftime, but I, I, feel like, I feel like the Lynx hold on. I feel like Collier's going to put up 30. And I feel like she's going to win the MVP. And I feel like that would be pretty exciting. And I feel like it'll be pretty good for UConn to get some new uh, some new champions. Obviously, Brianna Stewart's won too many championships. So uh, I'm excited for Collier to potentially win this. I, I'm the deciding vote here. I see Brianna Stewart is two of nine shooting. I don't think that sticks in the second half. I think she does a lot better. But why not ride with the Lynx? I mean, the Liberty, I, I if you guys remember last episode, I said Liberty in four. Now, obviously, that's not the case. That can't happen anymore. Why not mix it up, go Lynx in five? I mean, I didn't think Lynx had much of a shot going into this series because I feel like they were just Nafisa Collier. And they honestly might still just be Nafisa Collier, but she's just that good and dominating their way to what's looking like 20 more minutes until a WNBA championship. But so either two of us are wrong or one of us is wrong. And so we'll look like fools once this episode comes out. But yeah. Until next time, we'll we'll talk about the forwards and centers of the roster. That'll probably come next week or so. We're not sure exactly when, but doing another preview before the season starts. But, yeah, that'll do it. Thanks for watching.